everybody, welcome to the show. My name is T and we are talking scary movies. I appreciate you checking out another brand new review. Remember, every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, I'm gonna have some horror news for you, an interview or an opinion piece for you to check out. But throughout the week, I am dropping plenty of reviews here on my channel. And the best way to stay on top of all of that is to hit that subscribe button and to check out my link tree, which you can do by going to linktr.ee slash T scary movie. If you get subscribed to my link tree, that's going to give you access to the YouTube page. You can catch the video versions of the show. To your favorite podcasting platform, you can catch the audio only versions of the show. To my Letterboxd page, my written reviews and movie rankings throughout the year. To my TikTok page, my short horror content, including movie news and movie premieres. To my Twitch page, we can catch all of my horror gaming this week. I'm going to get started on the thing for PlayStation 2. And my Fangoria shop page, where you can enjoy 20% off anything in the Fangoria shop, including their physical magazine yearly subscription. Take advantage of that, folks. Hit that subscribe button as the more followers I get, the more content I'm going to put out for all of you. We got a lot of great stuff coming up for you here. We are deep in the thick of full moon terror, folks. Just got done talking the beast within. Later this week, we're going to be talking the howling. And tonight's film, we are talking dog soldiers. You do not want to miss that at all but as we head into august folks we know alien romulus is coming out we know trap is coming out we know cuckoo is coming out as well you don't want to miss reviews for any of those either and i'm gonna hopefully finally be able to talk a little bit more about the tv show i got a chance to go and do earlier this year which should be hitting screens later on this fall here during the spooky season so we'll get to talk a bit about that as well too hopefully but Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything at all, folks. And like I said, tonight we are talking dog soldiers. Now, I'm sure most of y'all have seen this flick here before. It is a awesome, awesome werewolf movie that came out a little bit over 20 years ago at this point. And it's been one that I've kind of put off doing rewatches for for quite a while just because I'm the crazy guy who did not like this movie and have not liked this movie for decades at this point. And this is coming from a person who thinks The Descent is one of the best horror films ever made. Neil Marsh Marshall's The Descent is an amazing, amazing film, and yet and still, Dog Soldiers didn't do it for me, and I did not really want to do a rewatch anytime soon, but if I was jumping into werewolf movies, I was like, look, I have to give it another chance because everybody loves it. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Let me check it out again and see if I saw something different and y'all I have finally seen the light of the full moon folks because dog soldiers is fucking awesome so we're gonna jump on into that y'all if you have not seen the trailer for dog soldiers yet this tells the story of British soldiers out on a training exposition who find themselves in the midst of an attack of a family of werewolves they have to survive the night if they want to stay alive but will all of them make it through that's dog soldiers for you there folks now here's the thing believe it or not i actually got to see the premiere of this movie when it hit sci-fi channel back again 20 years ago um for its premiere because a lot of folks who might not remember this should know that while it had a theatrical premiere overseas here in the states it didn't get a theatrical release at all and it made its premiere on sci-fi and that's kind of a crazy kind time uh crazy kind uh, crazy time to think about honestly just because a film like that sci-fi probably wouldn't get that kind of premiere today like in the world that we live in like right now most likely this would be a movie that would hit something like a shutter or a prime video or a netflix these days if it wasn't going to get a theatrical release but that kind of tells you how high profile this film really was because there weren't too many movies like 20 years ago that were getting their like their u.s premieres on cable network channels like the sci-fi channel so that's pretty outstanding to say at that point and this is still before the descent as well y'all you have to keep that in mind this is before neil marshall screwed everybody's bedtime up by the cave dwelling monsters of the descent so the fact that this was that high profile back then is just insane to think about now with this here 
I talked last week in uh, Wednesday's episode uh, about Full Moon Terror and how like the best werewolf movies and the majority of werewolf movies out there are usually using lycanthropy as an analogy for these problems that either the character that's besieged by it or the people that are around this character are dealing with in their lives. And the idea that becoming a werewolf and that transformation and letting out all that aggression and anger and rage and just everything are things that you can't really do when you're a human and i thought the beast within recently did such an amazing job telling that kind of story and then kind of throwing a twist to you at the end not really a twist though if you're you're paying attention and can kind of pick up on those soft cues but amazing film that did a great job with that but again, the whole idea is werewolf movies don't typically end up the way the dog soldiers did to where there's not really that much that's being said behind the action and the terror that's going on. And I'm not discounting this film because dog soldiers is incredible and it is very possible that Neil Marshall maybe was saying something about like the, the 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 banality of war and how war is useless and how you ultimately just end up finding yourselves like maybe there's something like that being told in this in this story but honestly dog soldiers just feels like look we're getting rid of all the deep stuff at this point what if a gang of fucking werewolves attacked these are these soldiers who are supposed to be able to take on anything how would that go down that's what the movie honestly is and it does an amazing job with that as well i think that it would be very easy to take a film like dog soldiers and compare it to other movies like a night of the living dead or a from dusk till dawn or even like an aliens for example to where a good plot point of those films is these characters get stuck in this one location and their job is to keep the enemy out and just survive until either help gets to them until daylight comes or until they find another way out and there's plenty of films that do that for sure but how many werewolf movies like that are truly out there and the cast here is a really really like excellent cast of a lot of note like a lot of someone's who you should really know i mean kevin mckid as cooper who is the heart of gray's anatomy at this point and folks i want to tell you something if you're a gray's anatomy fan i need to give you an honest to god truth that you have to listen and you have to kind of accept as law at this point are you listening gray's anatomy fan owen is never going to fucking die you have to accept that. It doesn't matter how much you want Owen off of that show. Owen is Grey's Anatomy at this point. Grey's Anatomy doesn't work without Owen. Do you see the shit that that man has done on that show in the last few years? They've had multiple opportunities to write that man out of the fucking show and they haven't done it yet. He's not going anywhere Owen will be on Grey's Anatomy until that show is done until they launch the third spinoff that nobody will watch but it'll still somehow pull in half the ratings that Grey's Anatomy has had there Owen is that show all right we're good here uh Kevin McKidd killing it as Cooper in this honestly and you know it's interesting because I've only seen Kevin McKidd in a few other things that haven't been Grey's Anatomy um there's that what is it Maid of Honor like him and Patrick Dempsey right and uh Deborah Messing um and then uh he was the voice for he's the voice for the lead character like in Call of Duty right in Modern Warfare 1 or 2 like I know he's the main character at least in one of those now but that's about it that I like I've known Kevin McKidd for and so it's kind of like surprising to see him like doing this kind of role and just fit in so well with it like this guy who apparently was like the top of his squad and got selected to come and join up with the special forces uh, the special forces troop but because the guy has morals and he questions authority doesn't make it into it and gets himself sent back to his original squad which unfortunately ends up being the beginning of his nightmare which we have to talk about the fact that dog soldiers for the most part takes place over one night now that's really rare for a lot of werewolf movies because most werewolf movies are going to play out over a string of nights usually because it's the whole idea of well we got to find out who the werewolf is and if they're going to stay transformed in that one night you can't really find that out 
so that's why you have extra nights going on so it adds more mystery to it somebody else could get bitten somebody else could be another werewolf at that point and dog soldiers keeps it very much contained over the course of one night which again just should show you how thrilling this film honestly is we have sean pertwee who you might know from event horizon or gotham an amazing amazing british actor now and playing the leader of Cooper's squad, who is whose job is really to get them in and out of this entire mess that's happening. And granted, he spends half the movie with his guts falling out. I swear to God, that dude could be in any ensemble cast and add some fun to it. And it, what's kind of actually fun as well, too, is that I actually remember Sean Pertwee being in um, the Munich Chronicles. I'm sure y'all saw the Munich Chronicles, which was an adaptation of is it doom soldiers doom patrol like that old card game super nintendo game that was out um and that's what the munich chronicles became and i remember because it was him and like tom jane in that movie uh, it's a good movie i i should do that on the show sometime might, i might have already covered that on the show i have to go back and check that one out but anyway sean pertree is uh, is fantastic liam cunningham who you know as davros from game of thrones playing the villainous captain ryan the man who was trying to recruit cooper to his special forces squad for a very very secretive mission that nobody was supposed to know and we find out it was so that they could capture a live werewolf and experiment on it that is is really the crux of dog soldiers is that if we're wondering why are these men in this situation why are they suddenly in the middle of this training exercise where all these werewolves are around is it happenstance and we find out that the villainous captain ryan his job was to lead a squad of men to capture a werewolf to bring it back to british special forces so again they could use that for their own nefarious means and of course that all fails now in regards to like the werewolves themselves in this the movie is not concerned that much with the transformation like in, in reality we only really see one transformation if i'm remembering correctly in the film itself and the transformation sure is fun but it's done for the most part like off screen because dog soldiers is very very much low budget and neil marshall does a great job of hiding the like the, the what could be typically the flaws of a low budget film by keeping the werewolves um uh in their like werewolf form for as much as humanly possible for using scenes to where the carnage takes place maybe just right out of camera view but there's a lot of blood and gore and everything as well um marshall does an amazing job with the direction of this film and the camera techniques that are used for it and it still manages to be a highly highly effective like action thriller as well too there's some great scenes in here and again very much evoking films like Aliens, like Night of the Living Dead, like From Dust Till Dawn, these movies about sieges that happen on these safe locations that characters are trying to keep the monsters out of. And I think one of the things that kind of uh, like that, that makes it like a little bit more interesting than those not maybe not better but a little bit more interesting is that there's not that hidden uh hidden traitor aspect to it because most of those films involve a character who's gonna ultimately fuck everybody over like oh i got bit by the zombie oh i got bit by the vampire i didn't get bit what bite marks on me <laughs> like that's how a lot of those movies end up working and dog soldiers does have that that's cap like that's uh that's captain ryan but again we shouldn't be trusting Captain Ryan to begin with. Like literally for the moment that they save him up until his villainous turn later on in the film, he doesn't do anything to earn the trust of anybody in this movie. So I don't really count that against it. Even if they did, it wouldn't have been like too bad of a trope, but they take away that whole like, the, like that hidden traitor aspect. And so it's just watching these men like eventually lose the endurance battle against the werewolves. And they don't really lean that much into the mythology of it, which I love as well. Well too like there's a scene to where they're going through this house that they all end up in looking for silver looking for a way to fight these werewolves and they can't find any at all and like one of the characters even says that like we well, you know no self-respecting werewolf would have silver anywhere around them and it's like well yeah and then immediately like kevin mckids cooper is like well then fuck that then like we're not gonna worry about that let's just stick to what we know blowing them the fuck up basically and i love that because they have to move on they don't have a choice they don't have like the the privilege of mythology at this point they just have to go with their training what they know best and i think that shows so well especially with spoon spoon is my guy in this movie the fact that he gets this amazing fight scene against a werewolf that 
My man actually was winning, all right? Spoon was winning that fight, y'all, and you know he was winning that fight as well, too. They just had to play dirty at the end of it, though. This is a fantastic movie. If you are looking to jump into a werewolf film to where you don't need to worry about the mythology, and it's just the idea of accepting they're fucking werewolves, these are British special forces, put them against each other, y'all. It's Alien vs. Predator on another battleground. What do you think, right? So go and check this one out y'all dog soldiers will change your life i don't know why i was being such a loser for this long and refusing to check this one out and not getting along with it i'm sure as a kid i just thought it was way too low budget and i wanted something with a lot more money in it i'm sure the fact that it was on sci-fi channel very much cut it down for me as well too but this movie is awesome you need to go check it out and for your chance to win a tall man funko pop in the comment section here on youtube i want you to tell Tell me if you've seen Dog Soldiers, who was your favorite in the film? Are you a Cooper guy? Are you a Spoon guy? Do you like Captain Ryan? You might be the guy that likes Captain Ryan. Do you like Wells? Who is your character in Dog Soldiers? Let me know in the comment section for a chance to win a Tall Man Funko Pop. And hit that subscribe button, folks, because I got way more reviews coming for you. You don't want to miss anything, folks. We're jumping right back into Mayfair Witches Season 1. And I got a few more episodes of Interview with the Vampire Season 1 to talk about, apparently, too. So, subscribe. Don't miss out, y'all. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared. Boy here is a big fan of Fangoria. So, if you want to check out the world's best horror magazine that's out there, get a chance to get yourself your own subscription, which I just got my first one back in 2022, and I don't regret it for a second. But if you want your own Fangoria subscription or you like the Fangoria merchandise, then head over to the Fangoria shop and use my link if you want to save yourself some money, folks. That's an easy one to remember. Just go to shop.fangoria.com slash A-X-D-E-W. Again, that's shop.fangoria.com Angoria.com slash AXDEW or use my specific code AXDEW at checkout. You can save 20% off your entire order and that implies two a subscription and the one-time orders as well. You don't want to miss out, folks, because with the magnitude of horror movies we've had released in the last few years and with what we have on the horizon, Fangoria is going to be your number one source for all that great juicy bloody information in the world of horror. So again, head to shop.fangoria.com. Hey there, folks. Thanks for tuning in to T-Watch This Scary Movie. I appreciate you checking out another review or movie news, whether we're talking movies, TV shows, books, or games, whatever. It's all scary. Remember, you can check out new episodes every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on the YouTube page for video. That's youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. Again, youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. And you can check out the audio version on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Just search T Watch the Scary Movie or Twaza. Don't forget, my name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared.